Today we are on Siesta Key Beach doing artificial turf. So we got to cut in all of these strips in here. And then we're doing the same thing over here. Putting these strips in. Not a bad work view today. That is for sure. First thing we're gonna do is measure these out and then start marking our turf so that we can cut strips out of it and put them in there. So we are going to go ahead and get to that now. Do you ever use the app on your phone to like preview what you're looking at? No, not anymore since it has a screen that shows. I'll just look in the mirror and like, uh, like, yeah. all right, it looks at a good angle. I guess you could just pull up the camera on your phone and just hit a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice with a new blade. Flip it over. I think the shiny side should face the beach. Dark side should face the yeah. rocks or like this. Yeah. Here, bring it more towards me. Let's go ahead and cut the ends of this one so that we can kind of he can see it with them like flush. You want to pull back trick. Thank you. 
Yeah. This one's longer, right? Well, no, we need. Oh yeah. Well then, let's just go do this one over here. That's what this is for. Anyway. Yeah. At this point, Ethan and I are cutting the turf strips to the size that we need and then placing them in the areas where they go and kind of just pushing them down with our hand. We aren't gluing anything at this point. We want to cut all of the pieces, make sure everything fits right, make sure we have enough turf for the project, which I know we should, but just to be careful, we don't want to glue anything down yet. We're going to cut all the strips in. And then after that, we're going to come back and glue all the strips down and then put in our fill sand after everything is glued down. So that is the process that we are doing now. Yeah. Now we're putting in these small strips here. Got all the long strips in on both sides. Looking pretty good. And then once we have all of our pieces in, then we can start gluing. So these small strips are about 15, uh, almost 16 inches. I think they're like 15 and a half. So Ethan was cutting 15 and three quarters um, turf strips and I was putting them down and then cutting off some excess, but still leaving a little bit so I could trim whenever we're gluing. Uh, the big thing with turf is you don't want to cut off too much. So cutting off a little bit um, longer than what you need is the best bet so that you can fine tune it when you're ready to glue it down or staple it down. That's when you really want to do your fine tuning at the end of it. Bigger size pieces in, now we're working on these corners. See if that'll work. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. See if we can't tuck this one up in there like, like so.
and again you want to overhang a little bit leave yourself some room to do some fine tuning um, when you're gluing them down so I'm cutting this and leaving a little bit under the other big size turf on the other end I like how he got that up protecting from salt dust and stuff like that from getting on it and it'll deter people from walking that way or maybe walking around it yeah it doesn't matter I mean, we can walk around right there too we don't have to go on it so i want to do the long strips first going this way and then we'll come back and do these that will be the plan That hurt. Are you wanting to pop this now? Yeah, we're about to start using it immediately. You can get it all the way in there? Yeah. I just like making a couple different holes. Whoa there, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. How do you disconnect the pressure? Add a little S. Yep, my guess goes. Go ahead and grab the bucket with all the other stuff in it real quick. Cause I'm gonna have to trim some of these edges. Uh, no, I just have that in case we get any glue or something on the papers or something like that. Um, let me grab the blower e so I can blow this crack out. Another big thing when you're gluing down, especially artificial turf, is you want to put weights on it. So if it's like a long strip or something, not a small four inch strip, but like a big uh, pad that we're putting seams together, we normally place our 50 pound bags of sand that we use as our infill on top of it to help weight it down and help that glue settle. But with these four inch strips, we just used um, a long two by four. So that was perfect for that. Um, and we would just stand on it or put our knees on it and then always tuck in your edges with a little chisel like this and a hammer it's what we always have used to tuck in our edges as a big key part of the whole artificial turf exactly looking down on me Normally we use a turf seam glue whenever we're laying down two sheets of turf and we're seaming it together. Um, I was going to use that on this too because you can use it for concrete. But I saw Home Depot sold turf adhesive to concrete in a caulk gun. So I went ahead and bought this for this project. It was the first time we used it and it actually worked good. So it was a lot easier doing that than uh, trying to get a trowel in that four inch gap. And I didn't want to make a mess on any of the pavers. So here, Ethan is holding up one end of the turf while I am crunching it into place, making sure the bottom of the turf isn't sticking up on either side because it's black and you'll definitely be able to see it. 
So I'm sticking in all this turf and he's holding it up, making sure that it doesn't get up all into the glue and stuff. And then I'm gonna tuck my edges here with my little chisel and my hammer like I was talking to you guys about before. It's a crucial part in making my final trim right here. Another crucial part when you are putting glue on concrete is making sure that the surface is clean. So every strip we are bringing the blower through because a lot of this turf, sometimes the blades will fall off and you'll get a lot of uh, turf blades sitting in your concrete. So before you lay down any glue, make sure just to clean out any sand, dust, or artificial turf hairs that have fallen off. Uh, we got a YouTube channel, so I film all the stuff at work, and then I. Yeah, yeah. Can't tell them all. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people do. Yep. Same. Same. Yep. Yeah. I learned more on YouTube than I did from school. I can tell you that. <laughs> I put my first uh, gate operator in on a YouTube channel. Yep. Exactly. Uh, tech support on phone. Yep. Shoot, I put a lot of operators in. I, I got a fence company like that. Do a lot of uh, gate operators. Yeah. Fences. I mean, YouTube video is a lot easier than reading the manual, you know, on how to put something together. I know it. 100%. I fix a washing machine the other day. <laughs> yep. The pyramid, boy, they don't, they don't make no money off me no more. Nope. I can do it myself. Exactly. back to put up all the grass blades turf blades I should say and uh, put my infill in the infill is sand the very fine sand and I'll show you guys it is almost it almost looks the same as the siesta key beach sand I mean this beach is rated number one in the world for a reason and a lot of it has to do with the sand. As you can see, it's a beautiful sand right there. And what I have in these bags, basically the same stuff. And that's what we use for our infill in here. So first things first, I gotta get all of these blades up and running vertical and not all slanted to one side and then when that's done I'm gonna take my little spreader you can call it a this is what we got I mean I bought it from a turf store if you dump your bag of sand in there release your trigger on how much you want it to dump out 
and then I run it all through here. And normally I use my power sweeper. It has a motor on it and it spins really fast, but I don't think that would be the best for this because they're just glued down and in strips, like especially in the middle, they're all just small like 15 inch strips. So I don't want to risk it pulling up the glue or anything like that if I run a heavy duty sweeper over it. So I'm just gonna use my little turf rake that I have. And get all these blades facing up right. This little rinky dink cart was such a hassle the last time we used it, it's not even funny. So we'll see if it'll work semi decently here today. Oh my gosh, it's dumping sand. Yeah, that dumped a lot of sand. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my little hand broom and broom it into the turf. The settings on that thing don't really work anymore after we abused it on the last job. The whole point of the sand infill is to help weight the turf down and also to help the hairs stand upright, the turf blades. Um, that's why you sweep it first to get them all standing semi upright and then you sweep in the uh, sand and then you want to sweep it again in the direction that you want the hairs to stand up because when you get a roll of turf all of the uh, turf blades will be laid down one way, it normally is whatever way the turf is rolled up. So you kind of just want to stand those up to get a better look. So I can take the blower out now. Give her a nice old blow. Completed. Now we will move on over to the other side. First thing first, break the blades upwards, which we already did that last week, but it's always good to do it again because they might fold over over time.
finished up here. And so the point of both of these turf pads is so when the people who live in these condos or the guests that they have whenever they're getting off of the beach they'll walk in and kind of wipe their feet on this and get the sand off of their feet or their shoes before they enter the building so i thought that was a pretty smart idea here so that is it for this turf install pretty easy not too difficult i'm gonna go ahead and load the trailer up and get out of here so uh, I will see you guys in the next one.